There's a lot of teachings in the spiritual world, even now in the where science meets spiritual world, about the role of our mind on the body. Those of you with us last week at our International Yoga Festival heard Dr. Bruce Lipton speak so beautifully about the role of our thoughts, the role of our mind, the role of our beliefs, the role of our emotions on our physical health. So, so we all know, we know that's true on some level, but the question was, is it really just that? Meaning, if I'm sick, whether I'm sick with something that is lifelong, or I'm sick with a cold or a flu, or I'm injured, is really the best solution to all of this, the only solution to this, my internal psychological processes? If I, you know, forgave more, loved more, let go more, really would I not have the cold or the flu or the injury or the ailment. And the last part of the question was, and if this is true, then of course, what about enlightened masters, sages and saints who had physical ailments? What about animals who get injured? And so it was a question regarding that intersection of the emotions and the body. And it's something that I think is really interesting because it's, it's dangerous in our minds and in our lives to go either too far on the spectrum. So for example, the it's all physical belief I'm sick because it's flu season. I'm sick because this person made me sick, or just I'm sick because the universe made me sick. Um, and there's no interaction with my mind at all, is also very limited. It removes the role that our mind and emotions play. So it undermines the importance of the mind. And to swing too much in the other direction of it's all in your mind is also dangerous. We're living here, our, our existence, every aspect of our physical existence is an intersection of a lot of different variables. One variable is the karmic package we've come into the world with. So born into an Asian family, you're gonna end up with, you're gonna end up with Asian bone structure. You're gonna end up with a genetic predisposition to certain ailments. You're going to end up with a genetic strength against other ailments. Born into an African family, you're going to end up with an entirely different host. Born into a Scandinavian family, an entirely different group. And we know this. Medical, medical professionals and researchers know, for example, that people of certain descents are more prone to certain illnesses and certain ailments. We just know this. This is not an in-your-mind aspect. So that's part of our karmic package. You've got a predisposition to something that doesn't necessarily have to be just your cultural descent. It's the family you've come into. It's the genes you've gotten. It's the body structure you've gotten. It's the early experience you got. Your mother accidentally dropped you. 
She had come out of the shower. You were crying. She went to pick you up before she even dried off because she didn't even want to take the time to dry off before picking you up to cuddle you. But her soaking wet body accidentally dropped you. So depending on which part of the body you got dropped on, you're going to have different, different issues. They're going to affect you in a different way. And yes, of course, learning to forgive your mother for dropping you is going to be a very important aspect of your spiritual and emotional growth. And it may have some impact on that part of the body. But the impact on the body is not rooted entirely in your emotional response to the fact that your mother dropped you. We've got bones. We've got organs. We've got muscles. We've got immune system cells. Certain chemicals interact with cells of our immune system in certain ways. Again, we know this. We know that people exposed to certain chemicals are mu at a much greater risk for certain illnesses. Go to Delhi for a few days. Take long walks outside. Breathe the air. Some large percentage of you are going to end up coughing and hacking in a few days. It's not because you're dealing with emotional issues pertaining to something from your past, and if you could just let it go, your lungs would clear up. You've been taking long walks in a city where it's the equivalent of smoking, you know, more than two packs of cigarettes a day. That's going to have an impact on your lungs. And so all of that which we experience in our physical world is an intersection. My favorite example that I, that I share about this is if I decide that what I'm meant to be on the earth is a basketball player, and I decide that's my highest purpose is I, I must start for the LA Lakers. I must be the star of the LA Lakers. Well. I could be as pure in my intention, as clear, as grounded, as rooted in my, in my desire. I could really do the very best. I could learn to dribble. I could learn to throw. But at, you know, 47 years old and female and barely 5'3", it's really unlikely that the LA Lakers are going to decide that I'm the one they want to start for them. Not because there's something wrong with me emotionally, not that I haven't fully processed some emotional aspect of my history, not that if I just could forgive my uncle, you know, then I would, it would all be okay and I would be able to play basketball. No. I'm the wrong height, I'm the wrong age, I'm the wrong gender. Not wrong in the big picture, but wrong for that particular thing. I grew up in LA in the 1970s when LA was one of the most polluted cities in the world. Almost everyone I grew up with has immunity issues. All of us who spent our early childhoods running around outside on days that to, in this day they would say, keep your children inside, they'd close school. It has an impact on the physical body. And so should you find yourself afflicted with something very temporary like a cold or flu, something longer, don't don't convince yourself or let others convince you that it's just all in your head, that if you just could, you know, work with it emotionally, it would all go away. That undermines the fact that there is also a physical existence. The spiritual teaching of this is all an illusion, it's all an illusion, it's all God, is true on one level. 
It's true on the highest level. It's true on the deepest level. And we are living a very a physical existence. Take a knife to me, cut me, I'm going to bleed. Regardless of how okay I am with my childhood, regardless of my relationship with my parents, regardless of anything. Take a knife to me, cut me, blood is going to come out. So don't, don't feel badly. Don't doubt yourself that the reason you have something is somehow your fault in some way, if you could just think the right way, it would go away. And, and the other aspect is we know the power of the mind on every aspect of the body. That doesn't mean it's causational. That doesn't mean your mind has created it. You got bit by the wrong mosquito, you've got malaria. You didn't think it into existence. You drank some water from the wrong place. You have to stay near a toilet for a while. Again, you didn't, you didn't create this. And the mind plays a very big role. And what that means is that how you interact with your illnesses and with your ailments plays a very important role on the impact they have on your life. There's, there's two aspects. There's pain and there's suffering. And we tend to group them together, but they're actually separate. Pain is something very biochemical. You can measure it in the body. We know, you know, the neurotransmitters, we know the chemicals, we know how it works, how if I stick my hand accidentally on a hot stove, how the sensory neurons are going to send that signal back into my spinal cord, how it's going to be registered, we know that. That's pain cut me with a knife, it's going to bleed. My body is going to send, send the right cells to that to, to heal it. I'm going to have a pain response that makes my hand go there, makes my hand know I've been cut so I can stop the bleeding. That's going to make me limp a little, take the weight off it. But suffering, is the emotional response to the pain or the illness. The suffering is the, oh my God, why me? It's not fair. There's something wrong with me. There's something wrong with the universe. There's something wrong with karma. There's something wrong with everyone else. Whatever it may be, the suffering is my drama. I've got a cold, I've got a flu. I've gotten a broken leg. I've got an ailment. That's the molecules of my body. Now my mind kicks in, and I have an emotional response to that. I'm always the one who gets sick. I've got a really bad immune system. I'm so weak. I'm this very, very fragile being. No, I can't do this. I'm not strong enough. No, I can't do that. I'm not strong enough. No, I this. And what happens is that ends up interacting also with the molecules of our body, with the cells of our body. And we end up creating, creating that self-fulfilling prophecy. Not that we've brought on the illness, but that because our mind has gotten weak, and this isn't true in every case, but um, this is something that happens to a lot of us, the mind gets weak. When the mind gets weak, the body actually gets weak. And so I may find myself more susceptible to things. We also know that things happen to the body 
to the saints, to the sages. I mean, if you look at the history of enlightened masters, Ramakrishna Ji died of throat cancer. Swami Vivekananda Ji died before his 40th birthday. Clearly, these were, these were sages with clear, clear histories. They were sages not with lingering emotional and psychological issues that were afflicting them. You know, I mean, we could say, well, you know, Ramakrishna Ji, what is it you're not speaking that you've gotten this? You know, we could, we could do the whole psychodrama on him, but no. I mean, you, you could do it if it weren't him, but because it's him, it's not going to fly. He was, he was one of the greatest enlightened mystics ever to live. There was nothing he wasn't speaking that created cancer in his throat. There was nothing he was holding on to in that way. It was karma of the body. It was the cells of the body reacting in a certain way, but he didn't suffer. He didn't have the emotional response to the suffering. In fact, when his disciples would talk to him and ask him about, you know, the pain, he'd say, I don't have any pain. I have your throat. I have your throat. I mean, he was just, he was living in the throats of his disciples that were not afflicted. So there wasn't the emotional aspect to it. Our highest, highest goal on earth is not how many days can you string together in a row without a cold or a flu. Our highest goal is not how many years can you live. How can you make sure that you never break a bone? I mean, obviously being healthy is nice. We all would rather be healthy than not healthy. But on a, on a deep spiritual level, that's no marker for something. It's not that people who are afflicted with things are somehow any lower than people who are not. In many cases, they're higher. In many cases, they're actually taking, taking negativity out of other people, out of other places. They're holding other people's pain in a lot of cases. So that's not the highest goal. The highest goal is how consciously can you live? So as Pooja Swamiji says, it's not the life in your it's not the days in your life, it's the life in your days. And that's that's the goal. And so if you have a physical ailment, short term, long term, and you can use it to recognize I'm not my body. My body is sick, but I'm not sick. The throat is cancerous. The self is not cancerous. The self has so many throats to use. If you can use it to have that type of experience, then it actually becomes a gift. Because those not afflicted we tend to forget that we're not the body. And when you get afflicted, the first thing that happens is we think we are the body. Oh my God, I'm going to die. Oh my God, I'm miserable. I'm sick. I'm this. I'm that. And it's an incredible opportunity to recognize you're not the body and to have that spiritual experience. So... No, it's not all in your mind. And yes, the mind plays a very, a very crucial role. So should you be afflicted? The question becomes not, how did my mind create this? But rather, how can I use my mind? How can I use my thoughts? How can I use my emotions? In this case, to have the highest spiritual experience I can, along the way, if it heals my body, fantastic. 
But you know, the the miraculous healing stories that we hear of, the miracles that we hear of, whether it's Bruce Lipton sharing them or other people who share them, there's one crucial element to them. Those miraculous healings that take place are always part of a spiritual experience. It wasn't that they thought themselves well. It was that in the midst of horrendous illness, they were given a spiritual experience, and that spiritual experience cured the body. Not that the lack of it had created it, but the spiritual experience was the main thing. And what they, what they write about, what they teach about is always the spiritual experience. The fact that the body got healed was a great bonus. The spiritual experience was what was main.